and uh, if you want to start the service IAS service and stop the IAS service you know we have got the, the batch file for that as well we have got the batch file for that as well start IAS service if you open it net start you know IAS admin service is not uh, required in uh, 10.2 which is going to be Apache Tomcat so this is not at all required net start and if you want to stop the service yeah stop service you know all the services which are required for that application server whatever all the application servers you have created you can stop and you can restart usually what people do is uh, sir even this batch file if I have to uh, schedule this I go to Windows uh, scheduler in uh, all programs or you know in programs and features under control panel and I uh, put this as uh, uh, you know a scheduler over there instead of doing that can we use our uh, TM and TI process to use this activity or to perform this activity so what we usually do is we right click on that process create a new process we call that batch file here and we schedule that as a chore that particular chore is a scheduler chore is nothing but a scheduler and uh, so and so time we put that uh, chore and uh, we restart the services uh, or you know we, we uh, uh, recommend or we, we assign the task to restart the services or you know restart the server at that particular time or the backup has to be taken so that is a usually procedure usual procedure which is followed there is a backup document along with the 04 scripts I'll be sending you some backup documents backup plan how the recovery has to be taken and what are the procedures and what services needs to be stopped and all this kind of stuff and all our DR strategy you know uh, just go through all this DR strategy in even there is an incident happened uh, at zero hour what you have to do at first hour what you have to do and you know uh, when the criticality is there uh, whom you have to inform and us it all depends upon the organization so I'll, I'll send you that and there is some sample BCP DR uh, business continuity plan and disaster recovery template uh, which needs to be taken care all these are all the uh, procedures that need to need to be taken care uh, for uh, disaster recovery this is a template in in one of my organizations which I worked so you just have to fill all these details whom to be informed server team network team applications team and all this kind of senior management whom to be in you no know, kept in loop and all these kind of details and all are available here with this uh, BCPTR this is business continuity plan recovery document but you are ensuring that uh, you are taking the backup onto the uh, separate hard disk and you are saving it over there or you are taking the backup from one environment to another environment that is always you are doing it apart from this what management does is uh, they take the backup on a daily basis incremental backup onto the tapes like Iron Mountain, Vistara, some companies are there in the market they take the backup onto those tapes when you order those tapes in case of disaster uh, any calamity those tapes uh, will be copied onto the uh, uh, machine and it might take 5-6 hours to copy once the copy is done uh, you can restore it onto the uh, server on a server standby machine whichever you have but during this 5-6 hours I have to just cross my fingers and have to wait for copy of the data rather than me depending upon uh, the uh, third party I means I as Ramesh, what I recommend is uh, take the backup onto your local drive with your, uh, uh, you know, uh, these uh, batch files which I have written in the past in 9.4, 9.5 versions. Okay, you can see this this batch file has been written in 2009. Yeah, because you know I've been working uh, uh, in 9.4 on that version in those days. So and later on we have not updated it. We are just following it in the same way uh, for our 10.2 versions also, and. Uh, then uh, what we usually do is we, we uh, retrieve that information and uh, we have a complete command I mean control in our hand uh, to copy the data from one of our servers onto the production server or a standby machine to uh, restore the data onto the machine so that is the advantage we take it uh, in uh, TM1 environment Do you get the point gentlemen this is how usually we take the backup in the uh, system and we have a mirror servers concept also here like you know uh, what happens who are the uh, server A and readers and writers all this kind of uh, details and discussions and all are mentioned over here the readers and writers concept and all is mentioned over here okay okay fine 
this is multi server configurations as i mentioned there is an entry level we have uh, uh, only one uh, environment where you can do the backup and restoration uh, in a recommended way we have development and test environment we deploy the objects and synchronize the data between production to development these things will happen in optimal way we have development test and production three environments okay since there is no database we don't have any database environments over here only three servers physical servers in advanced way if the client has more money we have a production b production n and all these kind of servers the reason with this option is uh, immediately if something goes wrong we will have a standby machine with another server and we can restore the data or we can we can post the data that is an advantage we take it from here that is advantage we take it from here on this uh, on this option okay is that clear is that clear guys okay great yeah so just i i would say i would recommend you to go through all these backup and recovery documents once so that to get an idea what exactly is happening in the industry and how should i protect my company data okay but one more thing is uh, it's pretty easy you just copy the data onto a pen drive or and onto a in any uh, the uh, external disk and just uh, restore it onto your machine you'll have only that particular cube or the entire environment set up so it all depends upon uh, you know uh, transferring of data what i'm trying to say here is transferring of data or handling of data is easy the check in check out not required we can we can maintain it all that stuff okay that's a backup plan operation okay that is what we usually do is this all done by admin exactly sir admin carries out all these operations yes it's all administrator tasks yeah in administrator tasks i'll provide all those details there is one document with me who who performs which roles and all uh, i'll share the document with you user roles that is a document uh, per roles by persons yeah roles by persons you can see here what analyst performs what developer performs or administrator performs what are his goals and tasks and what are the tools he takes care you know in tm1 and all this kind of uh, details and all are provided here okay uh Uh, that's a good question we will be share, we will be working as developers or admins that's a good question i when i started working uh, in tm and i was developer admin i was uh, everything you know there is no specific role sir please understand that it's not in in cognos bi at least uh, you have a specific role for bi admin you know and uh, a developer and all these kind of uh, roles were defined over there but in tm1 we don't have that because you know it can be maintained by developers itself we don't need to uh, wait for someone to handle this activity you getting a point but if the client has more money they'll maintain developers they'll maintain administrators and they you know they will they can do that activity we are not denying on that part okay okay fine so now we have seen how to take the backup and how to restore it and you know how to play around with the data in the tm1 environment fair enough okay now let me close this part okay uh i would like to know as an administrator i would like to know who connected to my machine and uh, what are all they doing on that uh, particular machine all right what we'll do is you know before that we'll uh, talk about replication okay because you know that that's a uh, simple concept we'll talk about replication and then we'll go to operations console yeah let let me talk about replication see i entered some data in english application server under this cube called cache flow management cube people started entering the data and i am having the data there fair enough agreed and this application server access has been given to some certain set of users very good and uh, 
another set of users have come to me and they said that uh, we also would like to have access to the same application server then i said uh, this is if you want cash flow management cube access i can give you that because you require only cash flow management cube access but unfortunately along with that cube there are some other cubes like you know as data if you observe along with uh, this particular cube there are some access to some other cubes i don't want to give you the access to those cubes you want only cash flow management cube i'll give you only cash flow management cash flow management cube access then immediately he'll post a question saying okay but the problem is if you give me access to cash flow management cube in another application server or you deploy that cube like what we have done earlier if any changes are happening because live changes are not happening in the uh, in our application server in english applications over there happening in s data because cash flow management cube basically is available there only and now management says uh, or you know your uh, business analyst says uh, i'm not having live information i would like to have a live updated information you know replication should happen whatever they update i should be able to see that information whatever i update they should be able to see that information they in sense the s data people should be able to see that information okay now if you observe we have a quality application server here it has got nothing in that there's nothing there's nothing in that cubes there's nothing in that and now i have a cash flow management cube or whatever the cube i have in this uh, s data so this is my source this is my destination so i go to my destination right click insert new replication from which server from s data only an administrator can do, do this activity you can see a shortcut has been created under replications in destination but that is not done which one which server you want let's say if you want to do it on purchase right click replicate it says you want to copy the data and synchronize the data and you want to copy all the dimensions you want to copy the rules if there are any rules you want to copy those rules and if you want to set those rules <laughs> all this kind of if you want to activate all this so then what happens is in quality you have purchase in s data also you have got purchase in both the places you have got purchase cube so if you enter the data in purchase cube over here i'm entering some data here now originally the purchase cube before replication it has got 43 43 1 2 3 4 5 some data is there that same information is been replicated to quality application server also and it is available in s data application server also now i am doing some changes in quality application server purchase cube okay i've changed i've done some changes over here can i see those changes over here okay it kicked me out i have to log in again i don't see those changes these are the changes which are available in the past also same changes are available here i don't see any new changes because in 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 after replicating i've done some changes if you observe if you compare you see in quality purchase cube in quality purchase cube i've done some changes in s data i don't the changes are not updated so what we recommend here is you go back to that replication part right click synchronize all data synchronizing it creates a, a log and in that log the tunnel will be created and the data can be transferred from source to destination and destination to source a tunnel is created once it is done you can see in s data purchase cube i have some information updated here in quality i have some information same information is available at both the places now i am doing the changes here they should be a get updated in doing the changes here in s data purchase cube and they should be get updated in quality purchase cube okay now again i go there manually to that replication 
So here I click on this and synchronize all data. It will be updated in quality. These are the changes which I have updated in uh, S data and those changes are updated over here. Instead of doing this on a manually on a daily basis or an hourly basis, what we recommend is uh, you go to chores. Okay, this is uh, this one. Okay, you go to chores here, create new chore, S data, single commit mode, you are committing that, activate the chore. Every 10 minutes, you just schedule it. So then what happens is whatever is updated in the source will be updated in the destination. Whatever is updated in the destination will be updated in the source. Vice versa. Both can be done in a pretty simple way. The chore will take care. Chore is nothing but a scheduler as a process that will automatically update the data. You don't have to go each and every time to your replication part. This is a replication. Only we have done for one cube. We have done not done for other cubes. Only one cube has been given access to him. So we will do it. Only as an administrator, we will give access and we, we can look into that cube. This is called replication. Replication helps you to synchronize the data between uh, from one cube to another cube sitting in different application servers of course under one admin server these are all happening under one admin server tm1 they are different application servers quality is a different application server and your uh, uh, s data is a different application server we have replicated only one cube we have not replicated other cubes instead of giving access to that particular cube we are doing it in this fashion now you can ask me a question here sir in, when you are replicating that purchase cube is also available here that purchase cube is available here does it mean that it is occupying the data it's like a shortcut mate i would say it's like a shortcut when you have a shortcut on your machine it will be 1 kb or 2 kb the file will be sitting in your uh, hard disk if you are having the file on your desktop itself of uh, 97 mb it's consuming memory do you get the point do you understand the concept right. this is how you have to think that's nothing that's how replication also works replication helps you to transact the data between one application server to another application server in both the ways in bi-directional which means it opens a tunnel and in the tunnel the data will be transferred that's the first thing second thing is uh, replication uh, incremental updates will happen in replication okay it creates a log file if you go to data director and if you check it out there will be a log file rep log it will be uh, saved under that particular all the transaction will be saved under that particular block file whatever the changes you are making into the application server is that clear gentlemen gentlemen okay we have a question here why do i need to replicate uh, why do i need to replicate two different application servers because the data is sitting in different application server and that's the reason we are replicating the data between one application server to another application server and we don't want to give access to that application server. If you give access to the application server, he will be able to see the view all the cubes. But we, we only want that purchase cube to be visible to him. Okay. Is that clear, Raj? I'm waiting for your answer, sir. I'm waiting for your answer. Is that clear? I have 10 cubes in one application server. I don't have any cubes in another application server. You are a user. You want access to one particular cube. What will I do? Will I give access to... You want? I said you want access only to one particular cube. In that case, uh, shall I give access to all the 10 cubes? That doesn't make sense, right? You belong to another application server. So then what I do is I, I just give act, replicate the data, put it over there and we transfer the data. Is it clear now? Yeah? Cube by cube. Updates are happening. Pretty good. In a pretty good fashion. Cube by cube we are taking into consideration. Okay. Vice versa. Fine. This is all about replication concept. It is also one time setup. Once the replication is done, uh, you uh, at a regular intervals of time, uh, you save the data and you retrieve the data and you know you populate the data into the cubes. So with no big deal in that part. Okay. Yeah. Any questions over here? Any questions? Okay. Let me stop that uh, replication, otherwise it will create a log, continue to create the log file, you know. Uh, multiple cubes 
at a time one cube at a time sir multiple cubes you cannot do because you know you do not have option to write only replicate this cube after that you go to another cube after that you go to another cube there may be 40 cubes or 50 cubes you have to do it 40 times yeah and one advantage i can tell you in this is uh, sir in one cube we have got six dimensions and in another cube we have got four dimensions which are common those four dimensions need not to be replicated they're already replicated okay now if I say, if I go here and if I start saying replicate, maybe these dimensions are already replicated in another cube. They need not to be replicated because the data is not sitting in uh, dimensions. The data is going to sit in cube. Please understand that. Okay. When we talk about dimensions and uh, cubes and you know elements, uh, you will get to know more about it. what i would like to do is I'll, I'll stop it here for today because you know you have to practice this if, if i keep on uh, mentioning and if i provide uh, the remaining stuff it will be difficult for you i'll stop it here for today when we meet tomorrow we'll talk about user scaling concepts you will talk about uh, operations console concepts and we'll talk about uh, probably we'll we'll start with uh, dimensions if time permits okay <laughs>